Hey everyone, I'm Frank from the City of Games and today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of The City of Kings. Now, of course, this is one of our own games, so please forgive any bias, but this is just a run-through. I'm going to be doing a two-player run-through of the game and I'm going to be playing one of the scenarios. So, let's get started. And as always, you can see the board is already set up and we've chosen this scenario here. So this is the desecrated scenario. I'm not going to be reading through the story just because I want to avoid any spoilers. But as you can see, we have gone through the setup. So for a two player game, we're going to be using two hope and we're going to be starting on early morning. We're also going to have free morale. Um, you can see that we've got zero XP, um, our stunning stats are zero, we've got zero skills, we're using creature stat by bar one, and we're not using any equipment. The board has been set up as per tiles one, two, and three, and we've revealed the astrographer's tower. This also happens to be the hero's starting location, but our workers are starting back in the city. So our objective, as shown on the bottom of the story here, is we need to discover five creature tiles, including the Astrographer's Tower, and then defeat all visible creatures. So effectively, we need to find four more creature tiles whilst we explore into this world, and then defeat all of the creatures that we found. So I've chosen Valyria over here on my left, and Earthshaker here on my right hand side, and we're going to get started. At the start of each round, we resolve the story and we've not found our five creature tiles. So we just simply progress by moving the time tracker on and players are going to take their turns. Valeria is going to go first and I really just need to start exploring. We've got nothing that we can do yet. We've got nothing we can see. So for my first action, I'm just going to move and I think I'm just going to move towards the north. And for my second ex um, action, I'm going to do exploration. So I'm going to explore this tile. I'm going to turn it over, see what we find and straight away we find a creature. So we found one of the creatures we need to find and we get to set up the creature. So I'm going to take the hope breakers creature template. I'm going to put their war banner on a tile over here to represent where they are and I'm going to take the first creature stat bar. Um, we can see this creature's got 3 HP so I'm going to set the health to 3. We get one easy ability so I'm going to come to the ability bags and I'm going to just draw one of the abilities out of here. We have picked up grab which means this creature is going to be grabbing us towards it, putting us onto its spot. Um, we can see it heals for one, it attacks for one, it has um, an AoE attack of one which means it hits everyone and it has a range of two and when this creature dies it's going to give us two experience points. So this is quite an easy creature and I, I should probably point out that this scenario we're doing is possibly the easiest scenario in the game. It's a really good one for learning the game and kind of understand how it works. It's fairly quick and it kind of gets you going on the right foot. So the creature's set up, we've done two actions, I've got two more actions, so I think I'm just going to start off by attacking the creature and I'm going to attack it twice. So each attack I have an attack value of one, it's within range because it's on my tile, so the first attack action is going to do one damage and the second attack action is going to do another one damage. That's the four actions of Valyria done, we're moving over to Earthshaker and Earthshaker is probably just going to kill the creature off. It makes sense for his um, first turn to be to attack the creature. Um, I have a range of one. The creature's in one space. I have an attack of one. The creature's only got one health left. So I'm going to attack the creature, which kills it. And the creature's going to come off the board. So the first creature is really simple. It's just teaching us how the game's working. Um, I'm happy that it's dead with no problems. The abilities go back in the bag. The stat bar is gonna be disposed of, but we are gonna get two experience points. We'll move the tracker up and we do pass level one. So as we um, got to level one, that means we are gonna get some experience point, I'm um, sorry, some stats, some upgrades, and we've discarded the stat bar. I'm just gonna put the creature template to the bottom of the pile. So we might come back to the hope breakers later if we find too many creatures, but now each of my characters gets to level up. In this instance, we're doing a stat upgrade. So I think Valeria is just gonna start focusing on increasing her attack value. Um, it'd be good to be able to do a bit more damage. Earthshaker, on the other hand, is thinking about increasing um, its health. I think we're gonna go with health because it's nice to be able to tank damage. Something in this game that's really important is knowing how to kind of absorb damage and being able to heal that damage. So at the moment, getting more health is a really good approach for us. 
I've only done one action, so really I want to start finding maybe a worker spot so I can send the workers out to start gathering some resources, but I'm going to keep exploring. I need to move. Um, I can only move once, and I think that as I can move um, two spaces, I'm going to move up to Valeria and across to here. This way, Valeria is also in range of anything that we find, and that's just a little bit of a defensive play. If you explore off on your own, you can get trapped, but actually that's worked out okay. That's a mine. Um, that's just a place where our workers can go to get some ore. I've got two more actions, so I can't move again. And I think, um, sorry, we've done the explore action, so I've got one more action. So I think I'm just going to start moving my worker out. My worker can only move one space, so my worker's just going to move across, ready to explore later on. <clears throat> we've now finished Earthshaker's turn, that's the end of the round, so we resolve the story, have we found um, five creature tiles? We haven't, we've only found two, well we found one but we started with one so we've got two of the five, so we're going to continue moving on. The time tracker goes round, and for those who aren't familiar with the game, we effectively have this hope track, and when the clock gets round to the top, we lose one hope. If we run out of hope, then we lose the game. So effectively, this can only go round one and a half times, and then the game will be over. Equally, we have free morale, and if at any point one of our characters dies, we lose one morale, and if we run out of morale, again we lose the game. Whilst these two mechanics are happening, we're effectively trying to complete this story. So it's a bit of a race against the clock, but equally, you don't want to kind of push yourself too much because otherwise things are going to get difficult. So we've moved on, we're back to Valeria's turn, we're going to reset our action tokens, and Valeria's going to get to go. She wants to just keep exploring, she wants to, where's she going to go? I think it just makes sense to us explore up at the top. We need to clear up as much of the board as possible to find these creature tiles. So she's going to move up, we're going to do an explore action, and we're going to reveal this tile. <clears throat> We have found a quest location, and because we are here with our hero, that means we instantly get to draw one of the quest cards. Um, again, I'm not going to read out the um, stories for these playthroughs, because I do want to avoid that. This is meant to be more of a kind of a tutorial help than a spoiler video. Um, but the objective here is to travel to Cogshead Works, and the reward is 1 XP and an item card. So we'll put this down in the quest hub, and if someone can find Cogshead Works, and we can travel there, then we're going to get a reward. <coughs> Valeria has done move and an explore, so it's time for her to start moving out with her worker. Um, I mean, we could get another quest, but at this point we really just want to keep pushing and find those creatures. Um, the challenge is her worker doesn't really want to get stuck, so if a worker explores and finds a creature, they have to hide. And because I can only move one space, if this was a creature, both of our workers would be here, and they would both get stuck. So what I'm thinking is I might move up to the Astrographer's Tower instead, and moving up to here allows me to start gathering some resources. So I can do the work action here, and that will allow me to start scavenging. So I will take one of the scavenge dice, because I have a scavenge value of one, and we will see that I get some wood. So I'm going to take one wood for the reserve, put it into my storage area, and that is the end of my turn. You can only hold six resources resources um, with each worker at any given time, and then you have to bring it back to the city to unload into the old barn. Um, but for now I've got plenty of room, I've done my four actions, we're over to Earthshaker, and Earthshaker, we've, <clears throat> we've, we've got a difficult choice because I could move up and explore this tile, and that's fine, but then that's kind of stopping Valeria being able to get anywhere. She can only move two um, spaces on one turn, so that means she would have to come into the red tile, and the red tiles generally are a bit harder than the green tiles. You have been warned, sometimes they can be a lot harder. Um, but if I come down here, then again, Valeria is going to be miles away. So I'm now having this decision between do we want to start separating or do I want to kind of push Valeria into the harder area or do we just want to be inefficient? And I think for the sake of this, um, I'm just going to move up. I, um, I don't really care about Valeria. Um, I'm going to move up to this tile with Earthshaker and I'm going to explore. So I'm going to turn this over. We're hoping for another creature, um, but we do find a lake. So a lake allows us to go fishing, um, fish can be used to trade for items when we get items, they can also be used for completing quests. So 
Earthshaker's done two actions. Um, his work is already down here, ready to explore, so we're going to turn over this tile. We really hope this isn't a creature, because we don't want our workers to get stuck. It is, however, a creature, which means that Earthshaker's worker is now stuck here. We're going to take the Shaldaka Lancers, and we're going to put this over here. We're going to stick this on Earthshaker's creature, because why not? That um, His worker is now completely useless. We're taking Stat Bar 2, we're putting it underneath and things have got a little bit more difficult. We can see this creature has four health so we're going to send this to four and it's got two easy abilities. So again I'm going to go into the bag and I'm going to take out two abilities and this time around we've managed to get curse and we've managed to get lightning bolt. So things are starting to get slightly more tricky. Lightning Bolt effectively is it's going to do some extra damage to us, and um, Curse is it's going to put a curse on us, which is going to reduce incoming healing. We can also see that it's got Reflect of 2, so this means whenever we attack this creature, it's going to do 2 damage back to us. Um, it's got an attack of 1, it's got attack every 1 of 1, and a range of 2. So this creature is not going to go down too easily. In fact, um, I can't really attack it yet, I mean our characters are too far out of the way, Earthshaker's already moved so he can't move closer, he doesn't have enough range, um, Earthshaker's worker is stuck so I can't actually use this worker, so actually this fourth action is just kind of um, not usable because there's nothing I can do. And this is one of the things you've got to be really careful with because now I'm not using a quarter of my turn, which means I'm starting to fall behind, I'm not being as efficient as I could be. Um, so that's the end of his turn. We're going to then check to see if we've done the story. We've now found three of the creature tiles, but we've still got creatures and we need two more. So time is going to move on. It's now afternoon. These different icons on the clock basically mean that if there are tokens with the matchy icons on the board, then we would have to activate them. So fire starts to become, um, it burns out. So a strong fire becomes a weak fire. A weak fire disappears. Um, ice starts to melt and so on. But at this instance, none of that's on the board. We don't have to worry about it. We are getting close to midnight though. So we are gonna lose some hope soon. Um, and we're back to Valeria. So we're gonna take our action discs off and Valeria's gonna have her go. <clears throat> it's, um, we, we've gotta work out what to do because Valeria can move two spaces, but she's not gonna, she's only got a range of one, so she can't get close enough to this creature this turn. But she probably wants to start moving towards the creature, so next turn we can attack it. Um, if Valeria was to move over here, then we wouldn't actually be getting closer to the creature, but Valeria is really kind of stuck in this inefficient land because, um, if we get too close, then we're not really going to be able to, well, we, we have to get closer, but well, there's nowhere we can go that helps. She can't get to this tile, so I feel like she's just going to move down. She's just going to move down, getting closer to the creature, so next turn we can come across, and then she's just going to start using her worker. Um, she's going to do a scavenge action, which is going to give us one um, item part, these cool little red axes. Um, she's going to do another work action with her worker, um, get another item part, and that's really good. So if we get three item parts and come back to the city, we can trade those for an item card. So that's not too bad. She's got one more action, and she doesn't really have much she can do. Um, we might as well send the worker back. Like, he's only got three out of six things, but it still helps. You know, whilst we have that spare action, it stops us having to waste it. So the worker can come back, and then we can move the two item parts and the wood into um, the reserves here. So um, these shouldn't be on here yet, sorry. So we've got two item parts, we've got one wood. We don't have any of these. So that is the end of Valeria's turn. And that's not too bad. I mean, it's not super efficient. I feel like we're starting to slip behind now, but it's okay. We've got some stuff. If we get one more item part, then we're gonna be able to start trading and so on. So Earthshaker, what's Earthshaker gonna do? Well, Earthshaker can, um, start moving down. But first, before we um, do our hero our hero and worker actions, we have to activate any creatures. So this creature now gets a go. However, it's only got a range of two, and there's no one within a range of two because they don't go around corners and they don't um, attack diagonally, so there's no one in range of this creature. So it's got no one to attack, no one to hit with the AoE, no one to curse, and no one to cast Lightning Bolt. If we were closer, however, the creature would then um, be doing something. 
again, Earthshaker's about to have a really inefficient turn because Earthshaker, if he moves here, then the creature's gonna attack him before he gets to do anything. Um, but then maybe we want to do that because if I'm in range, then when the creature attacks me, um, Valyria's gonna be able to move in range and start attacking um, because otherwise if I move out of the range and Valyria moves into range to attack, then the creature will attack Valyria because I won't be in range. Oh my god, that sounded complicated, didn't it? But let's show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to move down with Earthshaker. Um, my worker's still unable to do anything, and I don't want to waste my actions, so I think I'm going to do an explore. At this point, we really don't want to find another creature. Um, what do we find? We find a shop. So finding a shop is okay. We're going to add some item cards to the trade district because we found a shop. Um, item cards are very, very helpful. This means that we're going to be able to buy some items. Um, as you can see here in the top left hand corner um, is the cost of the items and at the bottom is what you gain. So here is a body piece where it's going to cost us two wood and that's going to give us plus heal, plus luck and plus um, gather. This is another body piece, it's wood and fish to give us attack and health which can be really good for Earthshaker and this one is a helmet which gives us um, two attack, move, um, scavenge and gather but we do need to um, have the helmet slot unlocked. So you can see next to the helmet slot, we can't unlock this yet. Um, we have to get one of our stats to the eight health or the five for attack or heal to unlock that um, slot. So the helmet we can't just use yet, but the other two are um, gonna be useful. So we've got two more actions. Um, Earthshake has already moved and explored. Um, we obviously, we've got these items. And now the question is, what do we do with these two actions? We don't have the resources, we've only got a one wood, so we need to get a fish to be able to do this, but work, um, Earthshaker's worker is still completely stuck under this creature, so Earthshaker can only really attack. Now, if Earthshaker attacks, the reflect is going to happen, which is going to do two damage to Earthshaker, so we can't really attack twice because we need to tank when the creature activates next turn. But I think what we can do is we can attack once, which is going to do one damage to the creature and it's going to do two damage to Earthshaker. But then we can use our fourth action to heal ourselves. We have a heal of one, which means we can heal ourselves back up to four and we can survive the creature's next attack. The end of Earthshaker's turn... It's the end of the round, we have not yet found our five creature locations, the time is moving on, and it's getting to um, the evening. So we're nearly at the end of this first day, and we've killed um, a couple of, well, we've killed a creature, we've got a second, so we've still got a lot to do. Um, Valyria is now ready to strike. Valyria is going to come in, and Valyria is going to move across. Valyria is going to just move straight over to Earthshaker, and it's going to attack the creature. Now, this is where Reflect becomes really painful because I have an attack of two, so I can push the creature's health down to one. However, the Reflect is going to do two damage back to me, and now I've only got two health. So if I attack again, that means I will die, but I'll also kill the creature. So at this point, I could sacrifice the morale. I could kill the creature, kill myself, lose the morale and move on. But I just don't feel like we need to. We're not in that much of a rush just yet. So instead, I'm going to start healing. And at this point, I can heal the last bit of health of Earthshaker. Because again, I've got a heal of one. Um, Earthshaker's on the same tile, but I've got a range of one anyway. So I can heal Earthshaker back up to five. And what that means is Earthshaker now has enough health to not only take the damage, but potentially to be able to kill the creature. Um, but before that happens, I've got one more action. And I think I'm going to start moving my worker out. Now, at this point... It could be really useful to get this body piece. Um, I've got one wood, and this does cost one wood. I mean, this costs wood as well, so I could potentially try and get more wood to get this, or I could try and get a fish. If I go up to the lake, I will be able to get the fish, but that is a fair way away. Or I could stay here, and I could continue gathering. Gathering me, I'm sorry, scavenging. Scavenging means I'm gonna get something random, so it is possible I could get a fish, but equally it could take just as long to move up here and guarantee that fish. So that's a problem for another turn. We don't need to worry about that just yet. We're over to Earthshaker. The creature, the Shaldaka Lances are ready to attack. 
So let's work out what happens. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an attack. And the attack is going to hit the priority target. The priority target is whoever's in range. Both characters in range. Whoever's got the highest maximum health. So because Earthshaker increased its health by one, that means that that's going to be the priority target. So the creature's going to hit Earthshaker, which is going to do one damage to Earthshaker. The creature's then going to do an AoE, which is going to hit everyone in range for one damage. So Valyria's down to one, and also Earthshaker's now going down to three. At this point, we cycle through the abilities, and they happen in numerical order. So Curse here is 12, Lightning Bolt here is 27. The so Curse is going to happen. Again, it hits a priority target, which means we're going to take one of the Curse tokens, and we're going to get to put this onto Earthshaker. Finally, the lightning bolt happens, which straight away hits priority target, doing another one damage. So curse decreases incoming damage by 50%. So if someone was to heal Earthshaker for two, it would actually only heal it for one. Um, if it's always rounded up, so when you heal someone for one, then it's always going to at least heal them for that one. The creature's now done its attack, it's done its AoE, it's done the curse, it's done its lightning bolt. We're all looking fairly bad. Um, Valyria's down to one health. Earthshaker's down to two health. Um, we do want to kill this creature and then try and heal ourselves up. So Earthshaker is going to do a heal um, on itself for one. So as I said, the one gets um, cut down to half, which rounds back up to one. That puts me up to three. I then have the ability to attack the creature, which does one damage to the creature, killing the creature, and two damage to me, putting me down to one. So it's a good job we got that heal from Valyria earlier and that heal from myself. The creature, though, is now dead, which does gives us two experience points. So again, we're going to put the abilities back in to the bag we're going to reset the creature template and we're going to take the banner back off the table um, the two experience points are going to push us up to four xp in total and that again does level us up and both of our characters are going to be able to increase one of their stats at this point i think valeria um is oh, it's difficult so we could start pushing our worker movement up to get that fish or we could increase our healing, or we could increase our health, or we could do more attack. Um, I think in this instance, I really want to start getting some more resources. I'd like to get this uh, mantle, I'd like to get the pauldrons. So I think with Valyria, we are going to push our worker movement up, which is going to allow her worker to get up to that lake quicker and to get some of these items. However, with Earthshaker, I think we're going to increase the healing because we are starting to take damage. I mean, we're on one health here, we're on one health here. So I would like to be able to start um, healing myself a little bit more. I've got two actions left. I think the logical first action to do is to move back to the city. If you move back to the city, it instantly restores all of your health and it also gets rid of any um, negative effects you've got. So the curse is gone, it's cured. That's the only way at the moment we've got to get rid of curses because we don't have the ability to heal curses. Um, and Earthshaker's got one more action. Now his work is here, so we might as well do a scavenge action um, at the cave. Now it's been cleared, we roll the dice we get another item part which will be the third item part so if we bring this one back to the city we'll be able to get another equipment card however right now that doesn't really help us because it's the end of another round and we're going to check the story we've only found three creature locations we still need to find two more um, we've killed all the creatures so we're okay in that sense but time is going to move on we get to midnight the heroes have not returned successful so we are going to lose one hope and we're now halfway through our hope so we do need to keep pushing. It's Valyria's turn. Valyria and um, Earthshaker's actions are resetting. And what's Valyria going to do? Valyria, oh my goodness, <clears throat> I think we're just going to move back to the city. It's not efficient, but we do need to heal up. So I think Valyria is going to move back to the city, which is going to heal her. This does mean that she can't do anything else this turn because she's done her move action. But I think we could start moving her worker. If we move her worker twice, the worker has a movement of two now. Um, so, yeah, sorry, it has a worker movement of two now. So we're going to be able to go one, two. And with the second move action, we can move again to here. That gets us to the lake. We can do some work, which means it's time to go fishing. And we get free fish. So that's great. We now have all the fish we need. Next turn, Valeria could possibly bring these fish back. Um, 
But for now, she's done with her actions. It's over to Earthshaker. <clears throat> and Earthshaker just wants to go out and Earthshaker wants to explore. We need to start moving. We need to start finding creatures. We're halfway through our hope and we are not finding stuff. However, we have found Cog's head. Um, and Cog's head work is where we need to go for our quest, which means by finding that location, we're going to get one experience point and we are going to get an item card. So we reveal an item card and add it to the trade district. That's a nice um, leggings there. So that's going to give us some health. So again, that could be really good for Earthshaker. Um, and we gain our one experience point. That is gonna push us up to level three. And in this instance, you'll see that it has one of the discs on it, which means that everyone gets a skill disc. Um, Valeria, Valeria, um, each skill tree, you kind of have the kind of attack side and then you've got the healing and tanking side. Um, Valeria wants to keep pushing that kind of aggressive side. So she's gonna go up the left-hand side. So she's gonna place her first disc here. This um, goes on the range symbol, which means she's going to increase her range. It's still in the one section, but that's absolutely fine. It's a good progress. And over here, Earthshaker is going to go up the right hand side because um, Earthshaker is more interested in going for the kind of defensive side of things. Um, so again, Earthshaker's range is going to go up as well. So at the moment, that doesn't help us too much because nothing's really changed, but it is bringing us one step closer to having a higher range, and it's bringing us closer to getting some skills. The quest is complete, so we can just discard the quest card off the side of the table, onto the floor, no one cares. Um, Earthshaker has two more actions, and he can't move again. He's stuck on his tiles. So I think that his worker is just going to work. We're going to try and see if we can get some more wood. Maybe we can get some ore. If we get some ore, we could get this apron. So I could move his worker across to Cog's head and guarantee that we get the ore, um, which is an extra movement and then an extra movement back. So it's two extra actions, but it's a guarantee. Now this has a one in six chance. So I could work three times and then I might get free ore. I might not get any ore. I could move twice and work once. So it's the same amount of actions, but guarantee the ore. Um, I think gambling's good, right? So let's go for the gamble. We're gonna roll the dice. We get an item part. Okay, um, item parts are okay. We're gonna work again and we get another item part. <laughs> wow, okay, I mean, you get more chance of getting item parts, but we didn't get the ore. So that was a bit of a gamble that didn't pay off, but hopefully those extra items are gonna help us out eventually. That's the end of Earthshaker's turn. Check the story, time moves on back to Valeria and Valeria is looking angry because Valeria is now looking at Earthshaker saying, I can only get to that tile. So again, I can't explore. I can't get to somewhere where I haven't been because I've only got a movement of two and I really want to increase my movement. So Valeria's best option now is to actually just move to here. That's as far as she can get. She can't get closer, but now at least next turn, she can get to many of these tiles and start exploring. <clears throat> you have to be really careful that you don't um, trap yourself into these inefficient moves. So her worker is over on the lake, which means we can start, well, we've got the fish, but do we want to move back? No, what we could do is we could move to the mine. And if we move to the mine, that means we could then work at the mine. And this time we can guarantee, ha. Oh, we get the attention. I say guarantee, nothing's guaranteed. Um, so we get one of these evil faces. So at the point, the fourth one of these goes onto the tile. This means the creature is watching us. We're being too noisy. We came to the mine, we shouted in the mine. We got the attention of a creature, it's moved on. But if we get too much attention, then it's gonna force a creature to come and investigate. So that's unfortunate, that didn't work out for us. We're gonna work again, and we do gather, we get one ore. It's not overly efficient, but at least we only do need one ore for these items. So Valeria's finished her turn. Next turn, she can bring the worker back. We'll be in the ability to start buying these items, but we have lost a few turns due to just not being in a good position. Earthshaker is laughing at Valeria's workers. Your workers are nearly as bad as mine, it roars. Um, so Earthshaker's going to move up. Earthshaker's going to turn over this tile. Um, we want Valeria to be in range. So um, there we go. That's worked out well for us. We found the other creature. Um, well, I said the other. We need to find fights. We found one of the other creatures, I should say. Um, 
but that's okay because that's what we need. So we're gonna take Boscor's Deep Tinkers and we're gonna take Creature Stat Bar number three and this one has eight health. So things are starting to escalate a little bit now. The creatures are starting to get stronger. Um, this one doesn't have Reflect, which does make it easier. Um, it only has an attack of one or an AoE of one, but it does heal itself. So this creature is going to be a bit of a long grind, and it does have two um, easy abilities. So what easy abilities are we going to get? We've got Grab and we've got Teleport. Um, okay, that's not too bad. I mean, they don't do any extra damage and they do kind of counter themselves. So teleport means it's going to instantly move towards you and then grab means it's going to pull you to it. But if it's already moved towards you, then that doesn't matter too much. So really, the grab and the teleport um, just kind of counter each other. Um, okay, so what can we do? I guess we can start attacking. It doesn't have reflect. I've got full health. We might as well attack it. We've got an attack of one, so we're going to bring its health down by one. We can attack it again to bring it down to six. Um, with our final action, our worker is just going to continue working just in the hope that through a little bit of scavenging, we can find something. All we're getting is item parts. Wow, I mean, it's not bad to get item parts, but that is very very uncommon okay so end of another round check the story we've got four of our five creatures now we've still not killed the fourth creature though time is going to move on we're now well halfway into the game so we need to make sure we find this other creature get this creature killed kill that creature valeria are you ready to do something you finally are in position you are finally ready to strike so valeria is going to attack and valeria is going to do two damage bringing the creature down to four valeria is going to attack again bringing the creature down to two and now Valeria is thinking that she could move up. She can move up ready to explore next turn, ready to continue the adventure. And with her worker, she can move her worker back another two spaces, not quite back to the city um, just yet, but at least we're in a good position. We're over to Earthshaker. The creature goes, the creature's gonna heal itself for one. It's gonna attack the priority of target, which is Earthshaker for one. It's gonna attack everyone for one, bringing um, Valeria down to three and Earthshaker down to three. It's then gonna to teleport to Earthshaker. It's then gonna grab Earthshaker to it. Nothing happens, we're already on the same tile. This has not turned out too bad for us in the long run. Um, Earthshaker is going to attack the creature once. Um, attacking the creature once is just going to push it back down to two, which means Valeria is going to be able to kill it off next turn. Earthshaker is then going to um, heal itself. It's got a heal of two, which is going to push Earthshaker's health back up to five. And then Earthshaker is also going to move and explore because we need to find these other creatures and we need to find out where they are. And we need to start killing them. So... <coughs> That's the end of Earthshaker's turn. That was a really quick turn. Um, we check, have we managed to kill the stuff? We haven't um, killed all five. We've not even found all five. Time is going to move on. It's now back to Valeria. Valeria is going to come over. She's already in range of the creature. She's going to attack the creature, which is going to do two damage to the creature, killing the creature. And again, giving us two experience points. This time round, we level up to level four and we do all get to increase the stat. We're going to put the abilities back in the bag and it's always good, it's worth having a shuffle afterwards to make sure we get something different. The stat bars are going to get discarded. Boscor's Deep Tinkers have been defeated. They go to the bottom of the pile and now we get to take this off and we can decide where we're going to put the stat point we just got for leveling. Valyria, um... I think Valeria just wants to keep pushing health. Like, we're on a combat focus level. We need to kill stuff so we can increase the attack value here for Valeria. Earthshaker, on the other hand, is more concerned about, oh, do we want health? Do we want healing? I think healing is going to be important just to start keeping our health fully topped up. Um, so that's going to be the end of the leveling up. Valeria's got three more actions. She's ready to explore. She needs to find something else. We need to find this creature. Um, we find another quest location. So we do get to draw a quest. And in this instance, oh my god. Okay, so 
Again, I'm not going to read the story, but this is one of the dexterity quests. So immediately stack eight wooden logs vertically or 12. Um, I know how unflat this table is, so I feel like I should do eight. But equally, I know that people are expecting me to do 12 um, just to show it can be done. But no, I am not brave enough to do that on camera. I am just going to go for the eight. So... I effectively have to stack these eight tokens vertically on top of each other using one hand, helping the lonely woodlife, um, woodwife, woodlife, woodwife to um, come back and stack the wood. Oh my God, I can tell this is much harder when I know that people are judging me and watching me. I've got to stack this up. This is absolutely horrible. That's five. Can I do this? Oh my goodness, I'm already shaking. Um, we're on six, we're, uh oh, that's not good news. That's not good news. It's wobbling. Are we going to be able to do this? Oh god. I think, I think we've, we are not doing this. We've done seven. There's no way I can get the eighth on. That was slightly wobbly to say the least. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Um, this is fine. I'm glad we didn't do 12. That's the eight. Have we done it? We've done it. Yes. Wait for three seconds and... Oh my god, quick, let's put that back in the box. That's fine, it's done. We're not even going to try the 12. There's no way we managed to do it. So this means that we get free wood that goes straight to the old barn. We get one experience point. I'm so glad that worked out. Um, we get level up again, which is another disc, and that works out well, because we can continue up here for Valyria, increasing her health up to five. We can continue up here for Earthshaker, increasing its health up to six. So actually, that's been pretty good for us. Um, we can now move with Valyria, and I think, because I can't get down to these greens, I'm gonna start digging into some of this orange. So I'm gonna move across, and I'm gonna explore, because I'm mindful that I do need to find this other creature, and we really don't have much time. And, well, we found another creature, so let's hope this creature is not going to be too bad. You can see here it's got two green um, abilities on the tile, which means it's going to get two additional green um, abilities on top of what it normally has. So we're going to take the Grimnar, because the Grimnar are big and scary. We're going to put them over here. We're going to take creature stat bar number four, um, and this has seven health. Um, it also has a shield of one, which means all damage it takes is going to be reduced by one. But it gets three easy abilities with the two etchers on there. That means we're going to take five easy abilities for this last creature. Um, I'm not too worried, you know. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I just got all this wood. I just got um, all this XP. We completed a quest live on camera. Everything's fine. Um, what have we got? Okay, so we've got... Um, and if we put them into number order, that always helps us to um, process them through. So we've got Frostbolt, we've got Poison Bolt, we've got Temptation, we've got Panic, and we've got Tracking. Oh boy, okay, so this creature has the shield of one that we already talked about. It attacks for two, it has an AoE of one. It's then going to shoot um, Weak Frost, which is going to put Frost on the board and slow down our movement. It's then going to put Poison on the board and um, poison us. It's going to then tempt a Temptation is going to tempt our workers to move towards it. Panic is going to make us run all over the place and Tracking is going to make it move towards us. So luckily this is the last creature because we should be okay killing it, but it's not great. It's not the easiest of creatures. Um, Valeria's done her four actions. She doesn't have the ability to move away. She's on four health. So Earthshaker is going to have to tank this creature. Um, but so that means that Earthshaker can't move out of range. So Earthshaker's got four actions. Um, Earthshaker's got an attack of one. Um, because the creature's got a shield of one, this means that if Earthshaker attacks the creature, um, it's not going to do much good. We are not going to be... Um, doing any damage. So Earthshaker is going to heal um, Valyria, pushing Valyria's health back up, just to make sure that we've both got our maximum amount of health. Um, we've got three more actions, 
and it kind of makes sense for us just to finish with the worker and to see what we can do. So we're going to do a little bit more scavenging. We get one wood. Um, we've got five now out of the six possible things we can have. So we might as well work again. And what have we got now? We get a fish, um, <clears throat> which is good because we did need some fish. Valeria never managed to get that fish back. And we can move our worker um, back into the city. And this does mean that we can now add one fish. We can increase the wood to five and we can increase our item parts to six. And we do only need three item parts to get some um, equipment. So actually we are now in a point where we'll be able to do that. Let's just chuck these back over here and let's have a think about what we're gonna do. Well, first uh, we check the story and we have found our five creature locations. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we have found our five creature tiles. So now all we need to do is we need to defeat the last creature. We don't want to spawn any more creatures and we just need to get this creature done and survive. So time is going to move on. And as we can see, we're now in afternoon. So we've literally got like two turns, this turn and next turn before time moves on. And at that point, we're going to lose the game. So it's Valeria's turn. The creature goes first and the creature is going to attack the priority target for two. It's got a range of three. So we're both in range. Earthshaker's got the highest health. So Earthshaker's going to take two damage. Then it's going to do an AOE of one, which means we're both going to take one damage. It's then going to do Frostbolt, which means that we're going to put one of the weak Frost tokens under Earthshaker. It's then going to do Poison Bolt, which means we're going to put a weak Poison token here, which then affects Earthshaker straight away, meaning Earthshaker is now poisoned. We're then going to do Temptation. Are there any workers within three spaces? There are not, so Temptation doesn't do anything. We're then going to do Panic. So Panic's going to hit Valyria first. So Panic means we're going to take one of the movement cards and we're going to move. In this instance, the one would take us off the board, which means that Valyria is going to move down to the two location instead. Um, we're then going to do Panic, which means that Earthshaker's going to randomly move. Earthshaker would move down right and um, down, so Earthshaker is going to move right. However, you can't move from an unexplored tile to an unexplored tile, so Earthshaker is just going to stop there. So with the panic done, then the tracking's gonna happen. And at this point, Earthshaker's no longer the priority target because Earthshaker is no longer within range. So, um, well, sorry, for tracking, it's just gonna move towards the um, here, closest tar um, target. So it's gonna move towards Valyria um, and that's gonna be the creature done. So actually, that's been fairly bad. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great news for us. Valyria is just gonna attack this creature. We need to kill this creature. Um, Valyria is going to attack for free damage. So if we do an attack action, that's going to do free damage. It's got a shield of one, so we're only going to hit it for two, which is going to push it down to five. We're then going to be able to attack it again, which is going to push it down to three. Um, we've got two more actions, and with those actions, it makes sense for us to move out of range of the creature. Um, we don't want to get hit by this thing because... It's, it hurts and we might as well move because we can't attack it again. So if we move up and across, at this point you see um, we're no longer within range of that creature. So when it activates at the start of our next turn, it's not going to do anything. And finally, we can move that worker back. We can get the free fish. We can also get the ore, and we now have the ability to buy all of these items. However, the shop is over here, which is out of range and really... Um, the amount of time left, it's just too late for us to be able to deal with that. It's Earthshaker's turn. Earthshaker is poisoned, which means Earthshaker is going to take one damage. Um, Earthshaker is going to have to heal up. We do have a heal of three, which means we can heal ourselves back up to five. I think in this instance, we want to heal again. Like We just want to have maximum health. We're coming up to six. Um, the problem is, where do we move? Because ideally, I want to move out of range. If I move out of range and the creature can't attack me, it can't attack Valeria, it's not going to move and we know it's there. However, I can't move from an unexplored tile to an unexplored tile. So the only places I can move to are onto here and then either to here, to here or to here. And none of that really helps because I'm still in range of the creature. So my option is I could explore, which then allows me to move off. But if I find another creature, then, oh, I just... I don't know. I, I don't want to gamble finding a creature because we have to kill all visible creatures. And if I find another creature, then time's going to run out. So at this point, um, 
I can't really afford to move out of the way. So what I think I'm going to do is um, to show you how it works, I'm going to do the work action with my worker because my worker is in the city. I can do the work action to change multiples of three um, item parts into equipment. So I can spend six and that will allow me to get two item cards, which I can now add to the trade district. I mean, this is really, really upsetting because there's loads of stuff up here that we could do with. And honestly, um, being able to buy these items right now would be really helpful, but <clears throat> it's just it's just not near us. I think with Earthshaker's last turn, we're just going to pass that action because we're near the end of the game. We're going to check the story. Have we completed the story? We have not. We've got to kill this creature. Time moves on. Next time turn, move, the t next round we lose. This is our last two turns. The creature's going to go, the creature's going to attack Earthshaker doing two damage. It's going to do its AoE, which will hit Earthshaker for one. Valyria is like diagonal, so it's not um, in range of the creature. We're then going to do another Frostbolt, which is going to reduce the movement of Earthshaker again. We're going to do another Poison Bolt onto Earthshaker, which is going to start stacking up the damage we're taking. Um, Temptation would move workers in range, but there aren't any. We're then going to do Panic. And this is potentially the bit where it all goes wrong for us. Um, <clears throat> luckily, we're only moving across one, so that's worked out perfectly um, because now with the tracking, the creature's just going to move to Earthshaker. If we had moved miles away, this creature could have moved out of range of Valyria, but it's worked out okay. Um, we're still in range. The creature is activated. We're back to Valyria. Valyria is simply going to move across to the creatures like in range and Valyria is going to attack doing three damage. Um, it's got a shield of one, so it's going to do two damage, pushing the creature down to one. Then we're going to attack again, which kills the creature. All of the tokens come off. And wow, that was so close. Um, if we hadn't have got that extra attack, then we just wouldn't be able to do anything. We gain an extra 2 XP, which means that we can increase a stat. Um, Valyria is going to increase her attack. We get a skill, so we're going to take Weaken, which means we can reduce the shield of enemies now. Earthshaker is going to increase its health just to make sure it doesn't die on its next turn. It's going to take Cure Poison, because Poison, Poison, Poison alert. Um, the stat bar comes off, we're going to reset this creature, we have now killed all the visible creatures, so we just need to survive to the end of the turn, so effectively Valyria is just going to pass that final action, Earthshaker is going to start his turn, it's going to take 2 damage from the poison, we might as well do one of the heal actions to remove those poison tokens, just to show you how it works, we can heal up again um, to get another free health, we can not heal again, but we might as well just pass those two things, because we have completed the objective we get to the end of the round we check the story we have found five um, creature tiles and we're done so if we hadn't we you know we could have used these actions if we were going to continue but we were basically three actions because if we hadn't have done that then the next turn we would have moved on to midnight we would have lost the hope and the game would have been over so that is the City of Kings. And as I say, this is the um, desecrated scenario. It's just one of the kind of the basic fighting scenarios that teaches you how the game works. It's a really good short way of being introduced to the gameplay. Um, if it's the first time you've played, I really recommend this being something that you play to learn how the game works. Then you can move on to the stories, which are a much greater, larger, grander kind of experience. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them below, and until next time, keep on adventuring.